What's up everybody, I'm back, and this is my review of episode 7 of Convicting a Murderer, which is airing on Daily Wire Plus. It is the rebuttal series to Netflix's Making a Murderer. If you want to join the conversation over on Twitter, give me a follow at Allegedly a Show. If you don't have Twitter, if you're not a Twitter user, I highly recommend getting it. The information that is coming out over there right now on both Convicting a Murderer and Making a Murderer is extremely interesting so give me a follow at allegedly a show so this is what they state episode 7 is about the blood vial is not the only egregious example of misrepresentation there is more to the story when it comes to the bullet with Teresa Hallbach's DNA furthermore Brendan Dassey's interrogators provide vital insights into the factors that led to his confession now I wonder why Mark Weirgert isn't in this at all or at least he hasn't been in it up until this point I figured he would be in it now now, if he was going to be in it, maybe he's extremely embarrassed over the things he did to get Brendan Dassey to confess all those years ago. Now, they start out with showing footage of Brendan's coerced confession. Candace Owens states she felt differently about Brendan Dassey than she did Stephen Avery. States you can see how easily Brendan can be manipulated. Fassbender states everyone focuses on the March 1st interview of Brendan Dassey, but states there was so much more stated he was first interviewed on November the 6th, 2005. Uh, they show a couple of clips with some detectives or and ex-detectives from Marionette. And even then, on November the 6th, 2005, Brendan states, I don't know, when he's being interviewed by these two investigators. I don't know which one of them is doing it. But that wasn't good enough for them. He stated, I don't know. And when the kid said, I don't know, instead of believing him, they said, why won't you tell me? Instead of being like, okay, he doesn't know. They needed to get something from him. Even back then, they wanted to get something from Brendan Dassey. He said, I don't know. But that wasn't good enough. There's no lawyers, there's no parents. Brendan Dassey is just rolled up on by two cops and he states, I don't know. And then, even back then, they were like, why won't you tell me? If this is supposed to lead me to believe that Brendan wasn't coerced, it is failing big time. I can, there's literally nothing happening here that is making me believe that Brendan wasn't coerced. It is absolutely gross. Tony, Todd, whoever is doing that interview on November the 6th, 2005, you are disgusting. They talk about how Kayla told officers they should talk to Brendan. Mark Weirgert, is it normal for a 16-year-old boy to lose weight like that? They're talking about the 40 pounds that Brendan Dassey lost. Do you have a 16-year-old or have you had a 16-year-old boy or girl? It is absolutely normal for them to lose weight, especially if they feel like they're overweight. What an absolutely stupid thing for this guy to say. Man, I don't know if this guy has kids, but I truly, truly hope he does not have kids because what an absolutely terrible parent. He would be like what a ridiculous thing to say oh I feel like I'm fat and I'm gonna lose 40 pounds no that that's not something normal for a 16 year old dad especially at that age they are so body conscious if he for some reason feels and is uncomfortable with his look he's absolutely gonna try to lose weight what a stupid 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 thing to say you know, they, they air some more of the footage from Brendan's interview that he did on February 27th. I don't know what the law in the state of Wisconsin is, but even if it, there isn't a law that states anywhere, not even just Wisconsin, but anywhere, even if you don't legally have to have a lawyer or parent present, when dealing with somebody like Brendan Dassey, you absolutely should still have a lawyer or parent present. Even if you don't legally have to, do the right thing to protect yourself as an officer so things like this don't happen. 
you can see how Brandon, if you're at all, I mean, these guys are horrendous people and horrendous detectives because of what they did to Brendan Dassey and the things they continue the things that continue to come out of what they said but protect yourself as a detective anybody guilty or not should have somebody representing them when you're dealing with somebody with the education and IQ level of Brendan Dassey just absolutely gross that police and investigators think that that was okay. They now mention how they called Brendan's mother after they talked to him and now they wanted to take him down to the station to give a full recorded video statement. After they got him to admit everything they wanted him to say and how they wanted him to say it, they are now going to video record it. Just absolutely ridiculous. This is making it look even worse on Mark Weirgert and Thomas Fassbender. They have an audio recording of them getting him to say things, and now they're going to have a video recording of him just repeating back the things they already got him to say. Man, this is absolutely horrendous police work. This is one of the stupidest things. This episode is full of ridiculous statements. This might be one of the most ridiculous things I have ever heard anybody say, period, in life. <laughs> Candace Owens states that the cops went to the school to visit Brendan because they were worried about him. When have cops ever gone to visit a person at school because they were worried about him. Come on, Candace. Not even you believe that. They said after the February 27th interview, they put Brendan and his mother up in a local resort. Some nice, I think it was like a golf resort or something. They said it was to protect him. Stephen Avery's already in jail. Who are they protecting him from? You will never get me to believe that they didn't allegedly, allegedly, allegedly promise this or like hint at it. Man, Brendan, if you tell us the truth, we'll put you and your mom up in this nice hotel, this nice resort. You're just going to tell us these things. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Talk about the press conference Ken Kratz gave on March 1st and March 2nd. I mean, there's absolutely no way a jury wasn't going to have this in their mind all the way through the trial already. Ken Kratz states the March 2nd press conference was wrong. He shouldn't have done it. And Jeanette Levy states the amount of detail that Kratz went into during the press conferences was wrong. They air a call between Barb and Stephen. Even Stephen knew what the cops were doing to Brendan at this time. This, this doesn't get me to believe that they are trying to hide something or cover something or come up with some sort of story. These calls are supposed to be like a, hey, he did it, gotcha type of situation. I mean, if it is, it's failing miserably. It's just showing more that Brendan didn't do anything and Steven knew the cops were gonna feed Brendan information. They air a call between Stephen and Laura, who was one of the original Making a Murderer filmmakers, stating that they were still standing behind him. Of course they were. They were smart enough to know what was going on. Uh, they air some clips of people talking about how, uh, why there was no evidence found in Stephen Avery's bedroom regarding to Teresa Halbach being killed in there. They, they talk about the stabbing, but they don't talk about the hair cutting at all. They try to explain away the reasons why there was no evidence found. And then they show a clip of interrogators, investigators asking Brendan Dassey, when did they clean the place up? He says, like 9.50 p.m. That's oddly specific. He's just picking a time. It's so easily, you can so easily tell. He's making it up. He's just lying. He's just saying something so that he can go home. Yeah, uh, uh, 9.50 p.m. That's when we cleaned up. He's like, can I go home now? It's so, so stupid and it painfully obvious. They talk about how Steven said he cleaned his rugs and talks about how Steven said he was going to return the carpet cleaner. 
If he used this carpet cleaner to clean up the crime, to like clean up the DNA or the blood or whatever it was they're alleging Stephen Avery used this carpet cleaner to clean up, why would he return it to the store filled with like already used? Why wouldn't he just like get rid of it? throw it out. There's all kinds of other ev evidence allegedly all over the place, but he's concerned about returning this carpet cleaner. Why wouldn't he have just like thrown it somewhere in the salvage yard, in another car, anything else other than using a rug doctor or whatever it was to clean up the crime scene and then return it to the store. It is so, so stupid. They talk about the searching of the garage and finding the bullet fragments, Candace talks about how it matches the gun that was hanging above Stephen Avery's bed. Anjanette Levy states the stuff about the gun should have been in Making a Murderer. Uh, I believe Kathleen Zellner talks about it in season two. Now, I made a tweet about this a little while ago. Did Making a Murderer leave stuff out of season one? Absolutely. Is Convicting a Murderer pointing it out? Absolutely. Did Kathleen Zellner talk about a lot of the stuff and explain a lot of the stuff that convicting a murderer is pointing out that making a murderer left out? Absolutely. But the, the convicting a murderer doesn't even want you to know at this point in time there is a season two of making a murderer and everything that they're talking about gets explained away anyway. I wonder if Candace Owens even knows there is a season two of making a murderer and everything she's talking about, the majority of the things she's talking about is already gets explained in season two of making a murderer. Candace states, why did Stephen Avery wipe off the gun? Because gun people like to clean their guns. I'm not a gun guy. I'm not a hunter. But all of my uncles growing up were hunters. And they would clean their guns all of the time. Even the ones they didn't use that were just hanging on the wall. They would just take them down and clean them. That's just something they did. They talk about uh, Sherry Calhoun and what happened with the bullet by accidentally introducing her DNA. They stated had... It had no impact because it was only in the control sample. They state there wasn't enough DNA left on the bullet to retest it a second time. Also, only showing clips of Brendan Dassey's interviews. Not full segments. They're just showing you the parts they are cutting out so they can show you and so you can hear the version of the story they are telling. Andrew Colburn talks about how he learned about they were going to say he had a part in planting some of the evidence and planting the blood. They talk about how the hole in the tube of blood got there. Now, this is something that has been explained away at nauseum since Making a Murderer aired. This isn't new information. They talk about how the blood in the RAV4 wasn't from the blood vial, which is correct. And Kathleen Zellner explains this in season two of Making a Murderer. Then they show Ken Kratz getting angry with Rookie once again. They've yet to show like any extended length of this interview. I'm extremely interested to see the whole thing. But man, this is just more storytelling on behalf of the folks behind convicting a murderer. There's been nothing yet that has been an aha gotcha moment. There has been no new evidence for me, only that one thing I think I talked about in the last video. They keep saying there's new evidence coming, there's new evidence coming. The only reason, the only way there's new evidence is if people didn't watch Making a Murderer or if they only watched Making a Murderer and didn't look into anything post Making a Murderer, which is fine, but to those people, nothing that they have represented in Convicting a Murderer has been new evidence. It's, there has definitely been no, aha, gotcha, he's guilty evidence. Not even close yet. Anyway, that's my review of episode seven of Convicting a Murderer. What did you think? What did you think of the episode? What do you think of the series so far? Let me know. Leave some comments below. I hope you're having a good day, and I will see you again soon.